But anyway, but it's good to see you. Uh, good to be here this morning. Well, this ain't like Sunday morning. There's always a, yeah, I don't know how many of y'all were testifying and, and to this, but Sunday morning is a, it can be hectic. <laughs> Sunday morning can be hectic, but uh, today, this Sunday's been one of those days. Uh, but it's all right. Uh, but anyway, the so main thing is that we're here this morning. God got us here safe. And uh, like I said, it's good to see y'all every fall. Well, announcements. So uh, just remember our uh, fun day coming up on September 14th. Uh, and uh, between 10 and 2, we're going to have that out here amongst the trees out here. Hopefully, we pray for good weather uh, for that day. If not, we just won't be able to have it because we've got a lot of outside stuff going on. And maybe we can reschedule or for another time or whatever. But I really want to get that out. Uh, we have some flyers now made up uh, to uh, take on, take soul winning next Sunday uh, when we go soul winning. Uh, we have some flyers here for the Bible Revival. It tells about everything. All the pastors' names are on here. And I would ask you, uh, if you're here this morning and you know a place that you could uh, take and uh, put a couple of these uh, couple of these flowers, flyers up in some stores or whatever, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, we have one here for the fun day, and then we have one here for the Revival. Uh, we'll try to fold those up and put them in a, uh, pass those out next next week on the doors that we knock. Also, both of these, uh, we'll get some more copies if we run out. Uh, so uh, just uh, just uh, be sure, if you, like I said, if you know where you can put one out uh, to do that for them if you would. Uh, and try to get this out in the community. We'll try to get it put in the paper. At least the, uh, not not the fun day, but the, we'll have some people who will run hot dogs. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, for as far as the uh, revival, uh, I'd like to, uh, to get some of them out on some doors, so uh, if y'all help me with that. <coughs> if not, good old word of mouth. We're going to put it on Facebook. I'm going to take a picture of it and go ahead and put it on Facebook. Uh, we'll have it on our page so people will see that. Also, we're going to do it today and get that on there. Also, to, uh, to next week, we're going to have, uh, after our night service, uh, we're not going uh, to preach too long, maybe. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, we're going to have a fellowship. We're going to have ice cream hot dogs next Sunday night after service out here in the Fellowship Hall. i uh, love to have you to stay. And uh, look, if you want to bring something, it may not have nothing to do with a hot dog. You may not like hot dogs, but I'm going to bring you something else. That's fine. But, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, just uh, you may not like ice cream, you might want to bring Brussels sprouts. That might be, that might be your thing. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, just uh, uh, just remember that, that you're welcome to, to, to stay and eat with us and have a good time. Uh, we're going to try to throw a cornhole board up out here outside in the parking lot for the kids and stuff. They might want to play cornhole or something. Uh, so uh, just looking for a time of fellowship. We're going to do that every fourth Sunday of the month. Every fourth Sunday night of the month, we'll have a fellowship night and, uh, where we can come together as a church and uh, have a good time after the service. So uh, remember that. Uh, just that, That's pretty much all I have on the announcements, I, I do believe. Uh, if I think of something else, I'll bring it to you tonight. This morning, I'm going to preach a message out of uh, Romans chapter number 6. And tonight, Lord willing, uh, I'm going to preach another message out of the same chapter, but to kind of add on to what I preached this morning. So uh, I welcome you back tonight at 6, if you can make it, uh, and uh, to kind of uh, to get the second part of it, uh, or the second thought that I had. Uh, so uh, just kind of remember that if you can. But uh, anyway, but anybody, uh, anybody got any urgent prayer requests that you'd like to bring to us now? That we need to pray about? Anything urgent? All right. Well, we'll go ahead and I'll open us up in a word of prayer. And if uh, you'll go ahead and uh, turn in your, uh, turn in your uh, hymnal there to page 364. That's where we're going to start this morning on page 364. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and uh, have a word of prayer. Our Father, we love you, God, and we just thank you so much, God, for what you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus this morning, God. Without Apart from Jesus Christ, Father, we would not have to even this day, Father, to come to worship us. Father, we would be lost and undone in a place called hell, Father. And I thank you so much, God, for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you sent your only begotten Son, Lord, to this earth. God, a sinless, perfect being, man, God himself incarnated. Lord, chose to come and dwell among us, a bunch of wicked folk, Father. And, Lord, give his life for our sin. Nobody took his life. Satan didn't kill him. Lord, he laid his life down on the cross of Calvary. And Father, we thank you so much for that, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the people that's joined, Lord, under the sound of my voice today, Father. Father, I pray, God, you just uh, help the Lord this morning, God, to be uh, to be about your business, Lord, of listening, Lord, uh, to soak up your word this morning, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you will help them, Lord. I pray, God, Lord, that, 
uh, will be one lost and undone this morning. Doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray God they'll come and go to kneel in an old fashioned altar and give their heart to you. Or even maybe even after the service or maybe the days to come, they may get to think about what they've heard this morning. And Lord, kneel down right where they're at, Lord, and give their life to you. If I pray right now for it, Father, was a singing. I pray God you anoint the singing, Father. I pray God you help me, Lord, as I try to lead singing this morning. Knowing, God, that I'm not a singer, but, Lord, all I want to do is uplift you today, Father, and bring you the most glory. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. Let me get my page turned here. I don't even have a, I guess I do have a book. All right. Page 364. If you'll stand in the house of God this morning. 364. Amen. Standing on our promises. We'll do one, two, and four. being kept. Amen. That promise was kept from the old covenant and it was uh, what? It was prophesied in the new covenant that Jesus was coming. The Messiah was coming. He has came, bless God, and he has given out his life for us and he has been buried but he has rose again on the third day and is alive today forevermore that we might be alive. This next verse, this next song will be our offertory hymn. It's going to be on page 355. Page 355. And if my uh, ushers will come on uh, the last uh, last verse of this uh, of this song here, if you'll come, and uh, we'll receive this morning's uh, tithes and offering. Page three fifty five in, in your hymn. Three fifty five. What a friend in Jesus. It's good right here, church. Thank God you got a friend.
seated on this song here if you'd like, but uh, page number 413, page number 413, stand up, stand up for Jesus, amen, amen, I tell you what, this is stand up for Jesus, let's stand on the last verse, how about that, all right, he's telling us to stand up, man. amen, all right. It seems like my voice it leaves me. 
uh, worse than it used to. I don't know, I guess some of you elders in here could probably uh, probably attest to that. Uh, so some of y'all, well, some of y'all elders in here, you're still loud, so but that's all right. I hope I'm out loud, amen? But, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I was going to try to do a different song, but I decided to do something this morning. I just like what uh, Brother Tony Hudson, I mean, Brother Curtis Hudson said. He said, I'm not much of a singer. I just want to sing, amen? I just want to make a joyful noise. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm going uh, try to try to uh, sing this this morning. It's very short. Don't pay me no attention, all right? Don't pay the singer. Don't pay me the, the one that's delivered no attention. The only time I want you to pay attention is when I'm preaching, all right? I want you to listen to the words of uh, this song. There is a God and only one. He made the earth and sun. He made all things, created man according to his plan. There is a God and he is real deep in my heart. His love I feel when I am laid beneath the sod. I'll see and know there is a God. Amen. When I was lost in sin and shame, the blessed Savior came. He lifted me on higher ground. God and he is real deep in my heart his love I feel when I am laid beneath the sun I'll see and know there is a God Amen there's a God Amen, amen. praise God let's give God praise amen. amen there is a God I thank God there is a God a God the God Amen there is a God the creator of the universe. He created everything. There wasn't anything here. But hey, he created everything and made it come to pass. Amen. He brought it to fruition. Uh, all he done was what? He spoke. God spoke. There was no big bang and everything happened. I, 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 there weren't no monkeys here. And, and as they began to, to mate and different things happened in their mating and everything, and all of a sudden a man came to be. No, that's false. Amen. I'm, hey, evolution is, is false. Amen. I praise God that I was created. By God. Amen. Jehovah God created me. He created you this morning, whether you believe it or not. He created, hey, the atheist don't have to believe it. He, he don't want to. But my Bible says that God created that atheist. Amen. 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 He created. But uh, anyway, out of Romans chapter number six this morning, Romans chapter number six, I got to get, man, we got to get some air conditioning fixed back here, or I'm going to die heat stroke. But, uh, but anyway, Romans chapter number six and verse one, the Bible says, What shall we say then? He asked the question, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his good word this morning. Father, I thank you this morning for, Lord, for the Holy Ghost this morning. I thank you, God, when Jesus ascended back into heaven, I'm not going to leave. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send back to you the comforter, which is who? The Holy Ghost. I thank God that I have the Holy Ghost inside of me this morning. Lord, apart from the Holy Ghost, I cannot preach the word this morning. Apart from the Spirit of God, we can't sing these songs this morning. Apart from the Spirit of God, and they get anywhere. But Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'll help me to hold down Ed this morning, to not let Ed pop up. Lord, I pray God that Jesus is here. Uh, I pray God with this congregation when they look about and sit at this pulpit that they see the cross this morning. A bleeding cross, that, Lord, that where a Savior died and gave his life for him, Lord. Lord. I pray God that's what they see. Help me, Lord, to hold down the arm of the flesh and help me, God, to say everything that you would have me to say and nothing that you would have me not to say, Lord. Pray that I don't say anything that, I, that you wouldn't wouldn't be uh, from you this morning, Father. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. But Romans chapter number 6, I'm gonna, like I said, we're going to expound on that verse more tonight, that particular verse there. But this morning, we're going to spend a lot of time in Romans chapter number 5. But this morning, I just want to talk about some things this morning before we get started. How many of y'all here ever wanted to be close or be, be like somebody else? How many? Hey, 
Yeah, everybody's done that. Even as our child, as a child, as children, I didn't have the mic on. As, as children, I think it's more more relevant. I don't know. I might be I might be lying to you there. It's probably it's probably more relevant now in, in, in adults than it is kids. To be honest with you, wanting to be like somebody else, wanting to keep up with the Joneses, wanting to be able to do it. But, you know, I, I I have had thoughts. Sometimes I love to be able to preach like them old men of God, like Curtis Hutz and Jack Howells and a lot of those preachers, old men of God. I, and I would love to be able to preach and. The way they preach, you know, but but you know we got to get to a place where I ain't Jack Howells and I ain't Curtis Hudson and I ain't Tommy Hudson. I'm Ed Williams. Amen. I got to get to the place that God can use me just as well as He used those men. Amen. I can't get into a place where if I get to look at man, I get to look at other people. Hey, I might think I I don't I, I would come to a place where I I'll quit. Amen. Because I think I'm, I'm trying to measure up to a man, and we should never want to do that. But but I guarantee you, everybody in here has always wanted to be like somebody else. Especially when we were younger. Anyone ever told you this? You look just like your daddy. <laughs> you act just like your daddy. I get told that a lot. Or you act like your mother, maybe. Okay? Uh, you act just like your mother. You act just like your daddy. Okay? You act just like your granddaddy did. Amen? We get told that a lot, don't we? Has anybody ever told you this? You act just like Jesus. You act just like Jesus. Hmm? How many of us get told that? You conduct yourself just like the Lord Jesus Christ did. You pattern your life after the Lord Jesus Christ. You're just like him. Huh? I, 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 I went to a man's house the other day. I know some of y'all here probably know Brother Dale Carson. And I, I, Brother Dale, I love Brother Dale. I've been friends with him since I got saved. And uh, he's, he's in the jail ministry. I went to a man's house the other day. And, and uh, he, he goes to Dale, where Dale goes to church at. And, uh, and he said, uh, I said, you know Dale Carson? And I said, oh yeah, I know Dale. I wish I could be like him. I was like, hmm. God didn't give him no more spirit when he saved him than he did anybody else. Okay? Everybody got the, got the Holy Ghost. Everybody got the Spirit. And the Spirit came in and dwells in that same Spirit. Okay? It's like, it's the what? Somebody might walk closer to the Lord than others do. Amen? Hey, that's, that's where it's at. Somebody that realizes where they've been, where they were before they got saved, they're excited because they don't have to live after that lifestyle anymore. They're thanking God that they've been born again. That's how every believer ought to act. We ought to be excited. We ought to be, we ought to be different. We ought to be a difference in our life. The that change that coming on the inside ought to be on the outside, bless God. We ought to be a happy people. We ought to be a blessed people, in other words. Okay? We all ought to have that zeal of what? It dies off, don't we? After a while. Okay, people get you get you get kind of cold a lot of times. Man, we ought to be excited about what God's done in our life. But this morning, I titled the message this morning, in his likeness. In his likeness. And when I begin to think about my grandmother, my grandmother used to she never bought dresses, ever. Ever. She never bought dresses. She always cut them out with those patterns. She'd go where? She'd go down to the, uh, she'd go down to wherever we uh, uh, went. I remember we used to, I don't know if some of y'all remember the green stamps. Everybody remember S and H green stamps? All right. And my her mama I used to save those things. And we didn't ever get to go off much, you know, to out to Athens or somewhere. And, and, and we never we just didn't do it as a kid. We didn't never go. So every, it just seemed like every time that they got up enough of them uh, S and H green stamps, We'd all hop in the car and go trade them things in on whatever they had, had their mind on. And a lot of times she'd go out there and they'd get a pattern that she wanted. And she'd trade those green stamps in for that pattern. And then she'd go home and she'd get the cloth and buy the cloth or swap it out for the cloth or whatever. And she would make her dress. She'd cut that pattern out. Look here. As long as you got that pattern, guess what? It should come out with what it looks like on the front, right? You got the pattern. Now think about it as a Christian life. Where Jesus has already gave us the pattern. We just need to fall into that pattern and, and make our lives turn out to be what that pattern is. Amen? Hey, hey, there's so many out there that pattern their life after the world. Amen? Hey, there's so many of our young people that, that get caught up in smoking cigarettes. They want to be like who? They want to be like the crowd. Okay? And then, guess what? The cigarette turns into something else and something else. It just snow, it becomes a snowball. Effect. Well, why can't, why can't our Christian life, why can't it become a snowball effect? Why can't we just get closer and closer to the Lord and begin to do more and more and conduct ourselves more and more like Him? Okay? 
In that same fashion, to follow out that pattern. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Kind of like a pattern in his likeness. But the first point this morning is, in the beginning, there was a pattern made. In the beginning, there was a pattern made. When I think about that, that pattern, in the beginning was a pattern made. In Genesis chapter verse 1 and verse 26 is where, where it all starts with that pattern. In Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 26 in your word of God. Genesis, the first book in the Bible. The Bible says in verse 26 of chapter 1, the Bible says, And God said, whoop, and God said, amen. I love it when it says that. Or, 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 or and, and God said, or thus said the Lord. I love those in the word of God. He says, let us. Hey, hey, that word us ain't there just because they decided to put us there. Hey, he said, let us. He said, Father, the God, Father, God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost was all there in the beginning. Amen. Jesus is there. That is prince all over the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. He says, let us make man in our image. There's that pattern that was said. Hey, you are made in the image of God this morning. Whether I, no matter how ugly I am, I'm still made in the image of God. Okay? I made an image of God. So are you. Every person that's ever been created, every person that's ever come out of the womb is made in the image of God. So when you wonder, I don't want to just wonder what God was like. Well, you're made in his image. Yep. Amen. Okay? You're made in God's image. After what? Our likeness. <laughs> After our likeness. Amen. Then the Bible says, ain't much excitement in here. Maybe y'all get there in a little bit. The Bible says here that what? Let them. And let them have dominion over the flesh of the sea, and over the fowl of the air. Are we not? What's took, what he said to take place took place. It's taking place now. Okay? It says here that uh, let them have dominion over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Don't you have the things that creep upon the earth? Ain't you got dominion over it? How many of y'all stepped on a roach mug this morning? I mashed it. <laughs> Mash that thing. Oh. Uh, that's the reason I wear a pointy. That's the reason I wear pointy toe cowboy boots. I can get them in the corner. <laughs> Amen. You don't hear that at the first Baptist this morning. Uh, that's just like saying a cuss word, saying "rope your bug in the pulpit." Amen. Hey, you gotta have fun. Amen. This is church, man. We're the God's people. We ought to smile. We ought to laugh. We ought to cry sometimes too. Amen. If they stepped on our toes. Amen. I may be stepping on something now. I don't know. Look at look at uh. Genesis chapter number two. I, I flipped my Bible and I'm in a hurry there. But Genesis chapter number two, verse, uh, look at number seven, verse seven for me. Genesis two, uh, two, one, uh, two, verse seven. I can't even talk. Bible says here, what, what does it say? Bible says, in the Lord look. He's making a pattern here. He's forming something. He's cutting this thing out. My, my grandmother's there cutting it out. In the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. Of the dust of the ground. We're all in here made of dirt. Of dirt. The Bible says, I believe it. We made a bud, okay? Huh? And look what he said he did. He said, The Lord formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay? So he formed, he formed that man. He formed it. Okay? He formed I got a marker right here. He formed it. He formed that man. That man's laying on the ground. You know what God really, I, I picture this stuff in my mind. It might not happen this way. I believe he did this. It's my home strap. He's, he done formed him now. He's laying there. He's looking at him. Boy, looks, I done, man, I'm God. Look at me. And he went. <sighs> it became a living soul. Amen. The Bible says it became a living soul. So the only way that I'm alive today is because, and the, way, the only reason you're alive is because God breathed into your nostrils. Hey! These people that's killing all these babies out there that's, 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 that's allowing abortion still alive in our earth. We're fighting it. We're trying to flip this stuff over. Roe versus Wade and all this kind of thing. Bless God, they just need to get a Bible out and say God is the only giver and taker of life. Hey, it says God breathed into their nostrils. Breathed in my nostrils. Now I can't believe it to be. A living soul. So that's the pattern. That's the pattern. In the beginning, there was a pattern. Whether you like it or not, as Rick Flair said, <laughs> whether you like it or not, God created you. Whether you like it or not. You didn't come from no monkey. Don't say I come from a monkey there. Say God created me. 
I believe the Bible. I didn't come here to one. Okay, I might look like one, but I didn't come here to one. Okay? Now, number two, the there's some traits of this pattern. It has some traits. That pattern that my grandmother uh, used there to cut that dress out, there was some traits in that thing. That's what drew her to it, right? The traits of it. When you think about the traits of a person, there's some traits that she has that I like when I met her. And I still love them traits. They've changed a little bit. Okay? The traits has changed. Mine's changed. My traits have changed. Okay? All right. But there's some traits that drew me what to her because of that pattern there. Okay? All right? Now, there's some traits of, of this pattern that we talk about here in the Word of God. And it's in, uh, it's, I wrote it, uh, chapter 5 of the book of Romans. It's in chapter, I told you it was going to be in chapter 5. Book of Romans, chapter 5. You ain't got to turn too many places. I'll be right across the page. But 5.14, uh, Romans 5.14 says, Nevertheless, look here. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, right? Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Look here. There were some traits there. There were some traits of that man. That man was what? It, it, when Adam was seeing there in the garden, look what? Some traits came, right? You know what they were? I saw a pattern of transgression. I see a pattern of transgression there that that was that, that had came about in the garden. Transgression, what is that? That is anything that is against who? That is against God. It's, 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 it's kind of like I compare it to sin a lot. But that transgression. It says Adam's transgression. What was Adam's transgression? Do we know? Yes, we do. It was in not, it's in, uh, look at verse 16. The Bible says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one con one's condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses under justification. We know what happened in the garden, right? We know what happened there. There was a transgression. Okay, as I just told you. All right, there's also a pattern of judgment found there in the garden. Okay, the garden of Eden. All right, there's a pattern. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But look here uh, in uh, five, uh, look at verse uh, verse number seventeen. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. All right, and look at verse eighteen. Therefore. As by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Okay? That's in my next point. We're going to talk about that. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now, if we talk about three patterns here. We talk about a pattern of what? Transgression. Then we talk about a pattern of justice. And then we talk about a pattern of offense. Now, point three. The first pattern brought about death, right? This first pattern brought about death, as we talked about here, a pattern of transgression. Romans 5, 12. Look at what it says. Wherefore, as by one man sinner, uh, sin entered into the world. By one man sinner, in, sin entered into the world. But what are we talking about? He is talking about that one man being Adam. That's where sin entered, okay? The Bible talks about in the book of Genesis, that God created everything, and then, he, and then he, he created man, and then he saw fit to what? Create a hand. He says he needs a help made, so then he took one of the ribs of the man, and he created what? He created woman, okay? Woman, think about that. Woman, it came from what? Man. She came from man. All right, he created her, okay? And then he, he puts them in this beautiful garden. Beautiful man. Man, in the cool of the day. Man, they get up and walk in the cool. God will get there, be there walking in the cool of the day. Woo! In the cool of the day. There was no sin there. It was perfection. Why? Because sin hadn't entered yet. They were what? They were both naked. They couldn't even see one another. They never even noticed their nakedness. Okay? Never even noticed it. If somebody was naked in here this morning, you'd be like, whoa! Huh. You wouldn't have even noticed it then. Why? Because it was perfect. It was perfect. Okay. And this garden was perfect. Okay. But guess what happened? What happened? Just look in Genesis 3. Look in Genesis chapter number 3. Think about it. 
I love the book of Genesis. In the beginning, hey, we didn't have a beginning, we wouldn't have an end. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Genesis chapter number three. Thank God for the beginning. Genesis chapter number three. Listen to what verse number uh, six says. The Bible says there, and when the woman saw, he told me, look, I, can't, I don't have time to read all of that. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food. Jesus had said a tree there was what? The tree of good and evil, right? He said, do not touch of that tree. There's a, there's a certain tree. They look here, Sister Collier. They had all kinds of trees and all kinds of things, Brother Kidwell, that they could have done. All kind of, all the fruit that they wanted. All, everything that they wanted was at their hands. But he put that tree over there and told her not to touch it. Why is that the one that we always, God said, don't do that. Don't do that. Just stay over yonder. Don't do that. And what would we do? We go ahead and go on our own and say, I'm going I'm to try it anyway. Huh? We tell our kids, don't touch the stove. Man, it's the next thing you can see. They go over and touch the thing. That's just man. We want to do our own thing. So she goes over there and she takes of that fruit. And she bit in that fruit. We know the serpent, the guy over the cocaine there said, hey, God just don't want you to be as smart as he is if you take of that fruit. Go ahead and take it. It don't matter. He just, he just don't want you to be like him. That's all it is. So she was. Like we do most of the time, we, take, we, we listen to him. And she took a bite of it. And then what she do? She shared that with Adam. Now what did that bring? That brought what? A trait. I talked about it in point two. A pattern of judgment said and then. Judgment saying, hey, when you do something that your daddy or your mama tells you not to do, and they tell you they're going to whip your tail if you do it, you go ahead and do it, and then judgment comes and they lay it to you, right? Huh? Is that not what happened? Y'all remember what happened? I'm not, I'm not, I got some more scripture here, but look here, y'all remember what happened? She wouldn't even have, she wouldn't even have cried when we had our young ones in that house. She said, I'm going I'm to I'm mess with childbirth for you. Your, your childbirth will be hard from now on. There'll be labor there. You'll bear pain in childbirth. For what? Disobeying him. You don't think there's repercussions for disobeying God? You think you can live like hell after you're saved and just get away with that mess? There is chastisement coming, my friend, if you're his own. You can't live like you want to if you want to. Just, you can, but I'm telling you what, you're not going to live without getting what? Getting, getting whipped. Okay. You just think a fleshly whipping is bad down here from your mom and dad or, or whatever, but when you get whipped by the Lord Jesus, by God, for waywardness, backslidden state, not living for the Lord after you're born again, truly born again, okay? That's what I'm talking about, a child of God. Now, I've told you a little background on that. Let's go to verse number six of chapter number three. The Bible says that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the what? Eyes. Mm, stuff looks good, darling. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Who told her that? Huh? She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Okay? So judgment's coming here. Alright? Now, let's go on down for time to verse 11. And he said, she's talking to God here, and he said, because Adam, she, he come calling to Adam, ask Adam where he was at. He knew where Adam was. God don't have to ask you where you are. God knows where you're at. He knows that you're in the house of God this morning. He knows that, right? You're not here by coincidence. He knows that you're here. All right? And verse 11 says, and, and said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Because mm -hmm. what did they do? They went and put fig leaves around them because what? They saw that flesh. They were walking in the spirit, right? They, were, they didn't even pay them no attention, right? So, they, so oh, what, oh, my Lord. Cover up this. Because why? They noticed it. Why? Because they had took of that fruit, all right? They had violated what God had told them not to do. They had disobeyed God. And what he told them? He said that, uh, how hast thou, hast thou eaten of the tree? Do you not think God already knew the day of the tree? But he wanted them to what? He wanted them to reply. And she said, look, where have I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And look what it says in verse number uh, 12. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to thee, <laughs> gavest to be with me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. He's doing what? He's now went into defense mode. <laughs> she did it. She told me. How many of y'all kids do that? Oh, oh, he did it. He made me do it. Huh? The devil don't make you do nothing. 
He might set things before your eyes to tempt you, to, to get you to do it. You're the one that makes the decision to sin. You're the one that made the decision to put your clothes on this morning and come to church. You make the decision next Sunday to stay out of church. You make that decision. He gives you the, he gives you the breath to soul in or tell somebody about Jesus to preach the gospel. You choose not to do that. I choose not to do it. Okay? Think about that. That's hard, but it's pretty, that's right. Look at verse 13. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. He tricked me. The serpent, the old serpent, Satan. Did he not curse the snake? What did he do to the serpent? I don't believe that serpent was on his belly that day. You, I believe he was standing upright. And God cursed that snake. Snakes on his belly slithering around. He still do damage to you. But what if that sucker was walking? What if Copperheads walk? Could not. I might see him run. I might not sneak up on him. But think about that. Think about that. And the Bible says here what? In verse number 14. And the Lord said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, look what he says. Thou art cursed above all cattle. We were under the curse. Do you understand that? Right there. The earth, the, the human race became under a curse because of what? One man, we read it a while ago, one man sinned. Look what it says. And every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go. <laughs> you know what we told him? On thy be uh, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Look at verse 15. And I will put enmity, or what? Separation between thee and, and the woman. Look now. And between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou, sh thou shalt bruise his heel. Now think about that separation between you and your kids. What did it bring in his life, sister and brothers? What did it bring? Cain killed Abel. Was that not separation? What do you call it? If that ain't separation from what it is, he took your life of his own brother. Spilt the blood on the ground. Okay? Look at verse number uh, 24. Well, we'll just read 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. I wouldn't lie to you about the childbirth. That's where it took place. There hadn't been no sin in the garden, there wouldn't be no hard childbirth, right? That's, that's the way I take it. Unto the woman, he said, I will bring much by thy sorrow, thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. I know sorrow when she brought forth children. I was standing in there. I felt bad for her. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh. How can she put up with this? The yelling and the screaming and the hollering. The pain that she endured. I was sitting there crying like a baby. Because I felt bad for her. And he said what? And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. No, no woman want to hear that today. But it's the Bible. That's right. It's the Bible. Okay? <coughs> nobody, nobody wants to hear that. But it's the truth. It's what the word of God said. Okay? As God said. The creator of the universe said that. Let's move on. Point four, and I'm done. All y'all saw for right now, you say, man, I wish you'd hurry up. I, this, is, this is getting on my nerves. And all he's telling me is a bunch of bad stuff. I feel bad right now. I, I don't even know why I came. I, I should have stayed in the bed. And I, I came on anyway, but look here, I got good news for you. Keep on crazy, baby. The second pattern brought about life. Hmm. The second pattern, we talked about that first pattern in Adam, right? Okay, we talked about that first pattern. Now there's been another pattern. The second pattern brought about life. And it's in Romans chapter number five. We'll start talking about some life here. Okay, Romans chapter five. And I'm going to tell you how you can have life. Okay, Romans chapter number five in verse 10. Listen to what the Bible says. For if, when we were enemies, you remember what I said a while ago about enmity? Okay, that's just like an enemy. That's just like, Distance. That's just like uh, 
disagreement or whatever you want to call it, enmity. Okay? For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The second Adam came along. They prophesied about the Messiah down through time in the old covenant. But it came to pass. The second Adam shows up on the scene here in Jesus. Okay? God sent his only begotten son to reconcile you and me. That is to put back together what was broken. He reconciled us. What do I mean? You get mad at me, Brianna, and Amber gets mad at you, Brianna. Y'all are enmity with one another. You go in your room, slam the door. She goes in her room, slams the door. You're enmity, right? You're, there's no fellowship between y'all at that moment. It is. It's hot and screaming. <laughs> but guess what you begin to do? Mom comes in there and talks to both of you. Says, y'all, you know, you know this, 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 that, and other. Shows you in the Bible where you're not supposed to be doing that. And guess what y'all do? Y'all come to the loving room and the loving room. The living room. <laughs> come to the living room. Mom sets you up there. And you look at one another. I'm sorry. Brianna looks at you. I'm sorry. You hug one another. You've been what? Reconciled. That's the same with Christ done for you. He reconciled us. He reconciled us to where we can have what? We can have what? Fellowship with the Creator once again. That mediator, mediator came in Jesus Christ. There's only one mediator between me and you, me, us, and God. Okay? And he reconciled us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he saved our life. Okay? We must what? Put our faith in that resurrection. Put our faith in what Christ did so that we might what? Have life. Amen. In eternal home called heaven. <laughs> now, I got to hurry up. Look at uh, uh, verses 50, the last part of 15. He says what? He says, For if through the offense of one, all right, that was Adam, the offense. Many, many be dead, right? Much more, much more. I love this. The grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. Praise God that he abounded. Praise God that the grace of God was shed upon you and I through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. Go on to verse 16. Then the Bible says there that, and not, look what it says, as it was by one that sinned, and not as it was by one sin, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to conduct condemnation. Okay, we brought condemnation when he fell in the garden. But the free gift, the free gift, is of many offenses and what? Under justification. What's justification? Justification is just as you've never sinned. It's how God looks at you, good child of God. It's just like you've never committed one sin. You've been justified. You've been justified. You've been made what? Made right. Okay? When a judge, when a judge gives his uh, verdict to that person that wins the case, they've been what? Justified before that judge that they did not do what they said they done, right? It's just like you never sinned. Okay? You get a new life, a clean slate. I preach a message called a clean slate. Okay, you start all over again with life. But this time you have what? You have the hope inside of you that helps you through that life. Verse number 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men in condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one free gift came upon all men unto the justification, unto the justification of life. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, who was that? That was Adam. He was disobedient. He didn't do what God told him to do. Many were made sinners. That made us all. <laughs> hey, it ruined all our Kool-Aid. Amen? When he done that, but well, look what it says right here. Though. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Righteous. Look, you've been made righteous. I've been made righteous. Titus has been made righteous this morning. Brianna was made righteous. Amber, why? Because they put their faith and their trust. Every believer in here, you've been made righteous on the inside. And look at verse 20. Moreover, that's a step above. The law entered that the offense might abound. Whoa, I like this. <laughs> Whoa. I love this last, this next part. But where sin abounded, grace did much more 
Oh man. Yeah. Look at here. When it talks about the law, when it talks about when it talks about that uh, uh, right there where's the more the law entered. The law, when we're talking about those ten commandments there, that you look at them on the wall, you used to could, I took them all down now. Uh, but you used to look at that and say, oh, wow. Woo. There ain't no way that I could live up to that. Mm. If you're a child of God, you say, my goodness. There's no way I could live up there. There's no way I, I, could, I could go without a covenant. There's no way that I could go without all those things that it says on there, all the commandments. There's no way you could ever, ever fulfill that. And thank God a believer does not have to. Thank God a lost person don't either go put their faith in God, put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, that as sin hath reigned to death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Look here. After you're saved, that's the, here's, here's the deal. He didn't just save you from your past sin. He saved you from your present sin. He saved you from your future sin. So why? You said, well, how in the world could he save me from a future sin? Because he said grace abounds more. Amen. It's because of the grace of God. Now, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of Christians today, that take that and they and they cheapen that down and they water it down. But I'll just live like I want to. I got grace anyway. That ain't what he's saying. Because what we're going to preach on tonight, or I read it this morning, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid. If God forbid something, you better look up. You better watch. It's one thing for mama to forbid, but when God forbids something, think about it. All right? I'm done with all this. Romans 6, 5 and 6. Look what it says. For we, if we have been planted together, look now, this, other, this word is just to come up that I started with. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. All right? We in the likeness. Look here. Baptism pool this morning. You know what that is? That's in the likeness of what? Death and life. Look here. When you go down up under that water, when, it, when you go down under that, that is a symbol of what? Death. The grave. Okay? The old whoever's being baptized, the old Ed when I was baptized was buried, just like Jesus was buried, and then he was raised to life. Resurrection. The life. The same way with you and I. We're raised to resurrection and we have a life. We have a new life in who? In Christ. We have a new life in Him. Okay? And you say, well, how do you know that? I'll listen to you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse 17. The Bible says here, Therefore, or for this reason, if any man be in Christ, if you're born again, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So that tells me there that once I get born again, the old man is dead. When I go down up under that water, that's the symbolic of the old man dying and being raised up in the new man. Okay? My inside is perfect, but my outside is still what? Fallen. Okay? That's what people don't get. They think when they get saved that they're going to live perfect. And then they get out of church because they can't live perfect. Nobody ever told you, I will never tell you that you got to live a perfect, sinless life, but you can't. But I promise you this. You can live a better life knowing that you got hope on the inside of you to help you to control that sin. Self-control is what it's all about. Okay? You don't got to go back to that old life when you begin to look at what Christ has done inside of you. Everybody stand in the house of God this morning. All for call is this. I don't know what you might need to do this morning. I have no idea. You might be saved this morning. I pray you are. I pray that you're close to the Lord. I pray you're not backslid. But I'll call me on page 308 if Sister Stella comes. But look here, just don't let, don't let that, don't let the word of God just be like water. Be like water running off a duck's back. Look, let it soak in. Let it soak in. You ever thought about that? How a duck gets in the water, man, and seems like he's he don't ever get, you know, he don't ever look like we do. We got a shower, does he? He's got the pillow on him, amen. He's but God built him that way. But just think this morning, if there's anything in your life that you need to come and talk to me about, if there's anything that you want to uh, give to the Lord, you can give you can give it to him right there in your seat. You ain't got to come to this altar. You ain't got to come to this altar. But I, I think there's something a lot of times about the public 
making it public, okay? Well, I don't want to tell somebody about well, what's happened in their life, got saved or whatever. But uh, just do what the Lord tells you to do this morning. Just do what he tells you to do. We're not going to, we're not going to labor his time. Just, I believe the word of God's already went out, and I believe he's already done what he's going to do to the hearts. Just all this is, is what? All this is just giving you an opportunity. We're going to just sing. We might not sing but one verse. I don't know. Let's just see how it goes. Altar's open. Let the heart, altar to your heart be open. surrender it all. I give it all to you, Lord Jesus. I surrender it all. Amen. Self and everything, okay? Pride, whatever it might be. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to have baptism now. He's been around the Word of God ever since, like I said this morning, since he came out of the womb, uh, pretty much. And uh, he knows he knows the Word of God, and he knows what the Word of God says about salvation. I believe that because his mom and him have put it in him. And that's, that's the way we're supposed to raise him up, man. That's the first and foremost, most important thing you can ever do for your child is to give them the gospel. Because right now, his ears are very, his ears are very fearful, if that's the word. He's listening. You can get to him better. Once we get older, we get set in our own ways, and then we've got to go through a whole lot of whole lot of stuff that we've done, and you know, we can't get past that. We think we've got to clean up before we come to the Lord and as men. But see, he's he's a he's a young boy. And it's a low-hanging fruit, if you will. And I love to lead children to the Christ because they're so easy to understand and to believe there. So uh, come on in here, Brother Titus. Ain't on your head now, you're good. You're good. That's my brother Titus. He's a, he's a little fireball rascal. He runs around playing. He enjoys life just like a child should. And I thank God for him. I thank God for his mom and daddy and their stand for the Lord. And I thank God for the opportunity to even have to baptize this little fellow today. Brother Titus, what do you think it takes for a person to be able to go to heaven? What you got to do? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I'm going to make all of y'all clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, look here. You'll turn around right here. If you look here, I'm going to hold your head. Don't you take that hand right there and hold your nose. I'm going to look at that water going in your nose. You might get choked. Now, now if it's the baptizer, we're going we're to baptize you here. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, Brother Titus. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This <laughs> 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 is funny. Amen, brother. I love you, buddy. Lord, you can exit right over here, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good job, brother. That's good. That's so good. You gave y'all a thumbs up if you didn't see it. Amen. Come here. Here you go. Come here. 
I just proved what I said last week. You know, I said, I've always had a way on women, you know, to come out. So if you want to have a phone on you, I promise you, you don't need it, all right? He's sitting up on the Boy, I love you, love you, buddy. He patting on the back. That's sweet. Sweet old boy right there. I don't know, good boys ain't sweet, are uh, We would have called you sweet, okay? He was calling you good. You're a good fella. Amen. Anyway, I have you a certificate of baptism here. And you know that baptism don't save you, right? You know, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ is what saves you. This right here is going to serve as a reminder of what, of, of what you put your faith in. Lord Jesus, when you put your faith in him. All right? It says here, this certifies that Titus Culberson was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the 21st day of July 2024 at Victory Baptist Church. And then I signed it down there. All I did is just sign it. I was a pastor. Eh? I ain't confirming you. You confirmed your uh, salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, not through me. Amen. But anyway, it's got a scripture down here. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, old thing, old, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. All right. We're going to go ahead and give that to you. And I'm going to take a picture of you there. Smile a little bit. Look down with the red There you go. Amen. Hey, let's give God for that. Amen. 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 Should have done that before fishing took. All right. All right. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I get an amen. Amen. It's all right to say amen in church. Amen. So uh, if you agree, okay? Don't say if you don't agree on me. That's what that means, agree. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and we're going to go to the house. And uh, don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll be back here at the house of the Lord. And don't forget next Sunday is Soul Winning Sunday. Uh, we'll go Soul Winning at 430. And we'll come back and have a message. And then we'll go out here and we're going to do what Baptists love to do. Eat. Ain't that right? Y'all tell me, look at some of y'all. A lot of y'all love to eat. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I didn't too, by my friend. That's why that's why everything sticks out right here, right? You know, we've got it sticking out. That proves that I, uh, I ain't went without any meals myself. But y'all uh, take care this afternoon. Uh, just think about what you heard this morning. Just meditate on the Word of God. And we pray that we'll see you tonight. Y'all are. Dismissed. We'll go ahead and have a word of prayer before we dismiss, and I'll go ahead and leave that. Uh, Brother Kidwell, would you lead us in dismissal prayer? Our Father, we rejoice in what you've allowed us to see and be a part of this Amen. morning. Lord, we're reminded that you've told us to at least we become as a little child in faith believing. Yes. Father, there may be many questions on our minds, but Lord, those questions are wiped away at Calvary. Amen. Thank you for this young man. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the special. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Mm. So many times we've stood in this church mm. and hungered mm. for the gospel to be preached. For children to be saved, for adults to come to Christ. Yes. Lord, you've given us that this morning. Mm -hmm. Be with this family, Lord, and as they honor and, ed and, and bring him up in the admonition of you. Yes. And Lord, that he may be called one day and give his life. Yes. As a servant to Christ. Yes. Dismiss us now in thy love, and Father, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.